Welcome to the T-60 series of videos. In this video, we will be discussing a brief overview of compensation as well as how to optimize the frequency response. I will briefly review some of the frequency response topics. A pull affects the frequency response by having the gain go down by 20 dB a decade and will have a 90 degree phase shift over two decades. A zero does the exact opposite, where the gain will increase by 20 dB a decade and will have the phase shift 90 degrees positive over two decades. Something very important is that when a pole and zero are in the same location, that they cancel. On the right, a typical frequency response of a buck converter is shown. Phase margin is the value of phase when the gain crosses over the zero dB point. Typically, it is around 60 degrees to avoid ringing in the transient response. Gain margin is the point where the phase crosses over and is generally greater than 10 dB. Note that this is done in order to account for variations in frequency response and to allow margin in the design. Crossover frequency is the frequency at which the gain crosses over the 0 dB point and determines the speed of the transient response as well as influences the magnitude. Making the crossover frequency higher will decrease the magnitude of the response as well as the time it takes to reach the maximum amplitude. Looking back at a typical buck frequency response, we can look at the characteristics of the response. We can see that the gain decreases linearly after a single pull occurs, and the phase isn't necessarily a linear 90 degrees phase drop as we would expect. The phase nonlinearity is often due to delays in the circuitry as well as parasitics. What this ends up doing is making it much easier to predict the gain, but not the phase when looking to control the frequency response of the converter. Since the gain is easier to predict, compensation can be found by controlling it. Note what I will talk about here will be true for specifically buck converters using OTA op amps as the air amplifier. This is true for the TPS7H4001-SP, TPS5061-SP, and the TPS5061A-SP in the space grade portfolio. We will also only be looking at specifically the type 2B compensation method as it is the recommended compensation scheme for an OTA buck converter. The first data sheet equation to look at is the R comp resistor. This equation comes from the predicted gain at the desired crossover frequency and is used to place the gain of the frequency response to get the desired crossover frequency. The capacitor is placed in order to get a zero at one of the low frequency poles in order to cancel it out and allow the phase to increase to meet the phase margin needs at the crossover frequency. The CHF capacitor is placed at the ESR zero of the converter in order to meet the gain margin needs. Note one trick that can be used in order to increase phase margin at the cost of gain margin is to decrease this capacitance. It is not recommended that this capacitor is completely gotten rid of as it does help with high frequency noise that can couple from other places. After using those equations, sometimes phase margin may be too low, in which case it becomes necessary to decrease the crossover frequency. If phase margin is high, it may hide the fact that converter could be much faster in transient response by increasing the crossover frequency. In either case, the crossover frequency has to be shifted, which can easily be done by using the R comp resistor. Determine what frequency has enough phase margin for your design, then find the ratio using the following equation that shifts the crossover frequency. Remember to change both capacitors and the compensation as well. This changes the gain of the crossover frequency without changing locations of any of the poles and zeros placed, thus only changing the gain of the graph and not the phase. Note that this works to increase gain margin as well. Simply find the point that has the gain you want to add to the gain margin and then use the same equations. When finding the frequency response of an OTA buck converter, first use the datasheet equations to determine the initial values, making sure to place the poles and zeros in the correct spot. Then then, measure the frequency response of the converter. From here you can change the compensation values in order to allow for more phase margin, more gain margin, or higher crossover frequency. 